I'm thrilled that we have one of my favorite people, Edie Windsor, the plaintiff in, as you know, Edith Windsor versus the United States of America, the Supreme Court case that, that brought down DOMA. Growing up in Philadelphia was like growing up in almost any small town. So I remember I stopped to pick up my mother once who was at a, at a meeting and her friend's sister was there and she was so obviously a dyke. And I said, Mom, is she married? And my mother said, to a woman. So that kind of, you know, it kind of set how, how easy I was going to be in, about the whole thing. And then I had the first serious love affair of my life. Okay. And that, was, that was my fourth year of college. Really. And then that's when I had to face, you know, do I, can, I, can I live this kind of life? Is there a way to do that? Is there any way? And, and in those days, I mean, I, most of you guys are a lot younger than I am. I'm 84 now. Uh, and uh, in those days, it still it looked impossible. And ultimately, I married the guy that I had been engaged to. And uh, I thought we could make it. He was a wonderful man. And, uh, I used to get jealous if I saw two women on the street on a Saturday night. Um, and, uh, and finally I said to him, honey, you deserve much more than you're getting from me. And, uh, and I need something else. And we split, and we split very amicably. And I lived, I worked, friends of mine found me an apartment uh, where they lived on the Upper West Side, which was then not, not like it is today. It was fairly pretty square. And I, but mostly I was busy working, and you know, and and my my social life hadn't been so good before I went left. So it, you know, it still it was nil. And finally, I called a friend of mine, and I said, "If you know where the lesbians go, please take me." Okay. <laughs> and on a Friday night, she took me to to this restaurant, Portofino, which was not a gay restaurant. Just on well, Friday night. Okay, lesbians were comfortable there, and there were enough of them there that okay, that you were part of this this community. And somebody brought Thea over to the table, uh, and introduced her, and we ended up dancing at Thea's apartment, and uh, and I danced with her, and people kept trying to cut in, and nobody could cut in. Uh, okay, it was, it, it was absolutely you know magic. And finally, I had to say, you know, I, I had to go home. Her, oh, she was with someone who was a, away at the moment and was visiting her mother or whatever. And I thought, I have to leave here. I have to leave here before her girlfriend comes home. And OK, anyhow, I left. So we would meet whenever we met. And this after over a two-year period, we did not date. But whenever we would meet at a party, we would dance together. And at the end of the two years, I was actually, I felt if you didn't, if you didn't meet somebody when you're an undergraduate, you're never going to, okay? There is no life, okay? You're a lesbian. And, uh, and so I thought, I was, I was in therapy, I was in group therapy, and I thought, uh, you know, if I could find a guy with kids who need a mother, a nice guy, okay, I could do that, okay? Because uh, I don't want to live a life without love. And, and that's where I'm headed right now. And, uh, and then I heard that she had broken up with the current person. And so I said, OK. And I knew she had a place in Southampton, or in East Hampton, really. And, uh, and so I called, I called some people that didn't know well enough, really, to be doing it. I apologized for you know, being you know, inappropriate or whatever, and asked if I could please come stay for the weekend. I wanted to play the field. I was definitely, that, that was the plan. And, uh, and then somehow, this thing began with Edie. This is a mess. Oh, <laughs> shit. This is, that was the sad, that's how I expressed it. This is the end of my plan. This is not going to work, because this, one, this one's got something very different. You know, and the plan was getting messed up. And she said, what is so awful? <laughs> so terrible. Wow, we had this gorgeous night together. What can be so terrible? You know, and my plan went to pieces. We weren't, first of all, we weren't out at all during the entire time that I was at IBM. 
16 uh, years. Uh, I don't know. One, I, I confess to the guys that I met every, okay, every year. Uh, I, I sat there with, right after I met Thea. I sat with them and I said, you know, guys, we're sitting here and the most important thing in my life has happened and I'm not saying anything. So I told them about the, uh, and uh, how'd that go over? Well, how, how'd they respond? Uh, mostly silent. Okay, one guy the next morning, uh, a friend of mine, a very, a very rigid, serious Catholic background. Uh, the next morning, said to me, Edie, I couldn't help fantasizing about you and a, a woman. And I said, it's okay, honey, you know, and I just threw it away. Okay, we're not going to talk, we're not going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, he then, the next, the next meeting was in, in Atlantic City, it was on this coast. He, he flew into New York and, and came to us for, for brunch. And uh, so we had brunch together with Thea and, uh, and then drove out to Atlantic City. And he never said anything the whole week about it. As we were parting, he said, uh, Edie, tell Thea how, how very pleased I was to meet her and to know about her. And he said, I never knew where you went, and I never knew if there was anybody to love you, and I think it's great. Okay, all these years go by, and this case happens, and suddenly there's a Google alert about the first filing, I guess. I get a call. Oh, and I used to call him, I uh, used to call him by a nickname. And, uh, and then I get a phone call, a phone message with, with that saying, this is it's your nickname, and if that name means anything to you, would you please call me back and tell me I found you? So I called back, and it was that guy, and he, he was very excited, and the next thing happened, he sent, and he, he co sent me, copied me on an email to all his grandchildren saying, okay, this case is about Edie Windsor, my very dear friend of many years, and... Uh, I want her to win this case. When did the notion of marriage occur to you? We're driving out to the Hamptons and she talked to me about, uh, if you were to become engaged, what would you do at IBM? Like, could you wear, you couldn't wear a ring, right? And I said, that's right, because everybody would have to know who is, would want to know who is he and when do we meet him and stuff like that. So she conned me into ultimately inventing the idea of a circle, of, I really should have worn it today, of a circle of, di of diamonds. And uh, a brooch, a pin. Okay. And, uh, and indeed, I, I, that, okay, we get out of the car, she got down on her knees, and she said, Edie Windsor, will you marry me? Okay. And, uh, and, I, and, and then she got mad because I said yes, 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 before she finished her sentence. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Canadian. I think what happened is very, very cool. But I also know from personal experience that just because the laws change doesn't mean people's attitudes will change, particularly in one's own family. So I'm kind of wondering what advice would you have for people like us who still have to cope? Some of it is you just have to live your life, okay? Okay? And, and the people who can't catch up, well, some kind of prejudices never go away. What's happening right now in our culture, okay, for us, for, for, for gay people, is, is the more we come out, the more people realize that, oh my God, my brother, my sister, my kid, my husband, my wife, okay. <laughs> okay all right, no, but it's true. You just have to, you have to kind of shrug and say, you know, I'll keep working toward it. Uh, and again, the more of us work toward it, the more, okay, the more human we look. Everybody already knows that we don't have horns. They didn't know that before the last three years, four years. The and more we see each other, the more we love what we see. And have that, have that love for yourself, okay, and for the people who can love you and who you love. What has surprised you about this process, about, about going public with your marriage and fighting for justice for the whole community? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. All right. Uh, 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 I, that's a true statement. Nothing yeah. surprised me. Yeah. Uh, it was like as it should be. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is as it should yeah. be. It is as yeah. it should be. And, and, and thanks for doing it, Ede. Uh, great welcome. <laughs> great welcome.